Let's talk more about this with a man who's been to space. Leroy Chow is a former NASA astronaut and commander of the International Space Station. He is joining us live from the U.S. city of Houston. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, you know, decades ago, it seemed like the interest for most space agencies was the moon. Now it seems that Mars is gaining more and more attention, maybe more than ever. Why do you think that is? Well, Mars is the next logical place to go, <clears throat> and it's, it's a matter of how do you get there. Uh, past plans have called for going to the moon first, which is logical because the moon is the perfect place to test all your hardware and make sure everything's going to work before going to Mars. But the current plans talk about bypassing the moon and going directly to Mars, which is certainly technically possible. But I think there's a renewed interest in Mars. It's always been there, but with movies like The Martian and, uh, and other movies about space that have been fairly recent, uh, I think you're seeing a bit of a pop culture uh, interest in Mars. What about the fascination? I mean, uh, art imitating life. I mean, we, we have all of this stuff coming from NASA, all these discoveries about Mars. We've learned so much about them in recent uh, months. And then the movie itself, it seems like they're kind of dovetailing nicely together, aren't they? Right, and, and you're, you know, we've seen some really fantastic uh, images and data come from the different NASA probes and other probes. Uh, just over the last year, we've had uh, successful landing on a comet. We've had uh, stunning photos of Pluto and discoveries of, of interesting things that are happening there. And, of course, the data coming from Mars, the fact that, as you mentioned in your, your, uh, your piece about the liquid water making it to the surface, and now verification of the idea that the solar wind is responsible for stripping away the, uh, the atmosphere of Mars. A lot of interesting things coming together and, as you say, kind of dovetailing with pop culture and movies, and so it's a, it's a neat time. Now, China is among the countries looking to get to Mars in the next five years. You visited China's Astronaut Research and Training Center. I think that was back in 2006. How rapidly is China developing its space program, would you say? Right. In 2006, I was the first American uh, invited and allowed to go visit the Astronaut Center of China. And it was very interesting. I got to meet some of the, uh, the first uh, Chinese astronauts. I uh, got to know the, the then director very well. And I've uh, been back to the center several times since then in the intervening years. So China is moving along at a nice clip. It's a very measured clip. Uh, but they've accomplished new things with each manned mission. And uh, as you know, they've accomplished EVA, the ability to do spacewalks. Also showed uh, they could dock to a small orbiting laboratory. And so they're coming along in a very uh, reasonable pace. Uh, the unmanned side, uh, the U-2 um, uh, lander over on the moon, the rover, was uh, enormously successful. And I'm sure a lot was learned from that. And as you pointed out, in 2020, China plans to land its own rover on Mars. So the space program is coming along at a nice clip. And I believe that, uh, you know, it's kind of an open secret uh, to all of us that China does have interest in sending its own astronauts to the moon. So uh, I would like to see uh, an international effort to go back to the moon that includes all of the spacefaring nations, uh, much along the lines of the model that we use today for the International Space Station. Well, as an astronaut, uh, I mean, how much would you be chomping at the bit to get an opportunity to either go to the moon or Mars for that matter? Well, it was the, the Apollo 11 moon mission that inspired me as an eight-year-old kid to start dreaming about space and wanting to become an astronaut myself, so I would love a chance to go to the moon. A uh, chance to go to Mars, uh, that would be exciting. It would depend on, on uh, when that's going to be. I, I'm still hopeful it's going to be in my lifetime, but uh, uh, back in the 1960s and 1970s when we were going to the moon, uh, there was no doubt that by the 1990s we'd be on Mars. So uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but I'm also being realistic about it. All right, Leroy, thanks so much for joining us from Houston. Certainly appreciate it.